welcome to my channel. Uh, lately you'll find stuff here for Java. I'm working on a game right now known as Mazes of Misery. Um, it's going to be a 2D game, still working to completion of this project, which is all due credit for the indie developers um, game Dungeon Lunar Engine. So anyways, let's get started. So I'm leaving off where the last video left off, which we were over here in the player class and we were talking about the animate when the what? water when the <clears throat> video cut out thanks to Camtasia so anyways uh, this is um, basically calling an inner class here it's called water enemy and if you go here to the water enemy which I have above here this is where it's ticking this class so to speak okay so anyways to explain this to you um, first I'll go ahead and run it so we can kind of um, before we go over all this you know kind of explain it here <clears throat> just to kind of give you an idea. The animation is close down the game, but you'll see the water down there below. It's probably because I'm running the map twice, but there's the water animation that I've now implemented into the game. So anyways, um, this is the uh, water animation class, and it's very similar to the animate class, the one that was created by Indie Developer, and it's basically, I've got um, buffered arrays set up here, I'm not currently using these. I had original arrays where I was storing individual positions for the water. I've tried a lot of different testing, hasn't really gone very well, so eventually I ended up deciding just to use data from the world class here, which basically takes tile blocks and it plants them in XY position based on what their block size is and where they are in the XY world map so to speak. So this is what I was doing is I'm basically cycling through the map very similar to that world class here and as I'm cycling through it I'm just searching for water animation which these are tiles I've already embedded inside of the the dungeon I'm sorry the world the world map here you'll see it right there water base waterfall actually it's it's right here it's water this is where it all actually begins at so it basically this is where the water animation and if you look at this number 46FF, that's basically this um, hex code here. Exactly what it's doing down here is it's reading that hex code to, um, which is down here. Sorry. I'm in the player class. I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong place. I'm like, where am I at? Okay. So I'm at the, um, let me move this over here for a second. The water animation. So right there, 46FF. So it's reading that same position where this tile was found here where it first planted the water in. And then that's where it's finding out where the water animation begins at. And these are just animating tiles, basically. It just takes one, takes two, takes three, which I'll show you in the map here real quick. Right here, there's one, two, and three. So these are all the different positions of the water to create the illusion. So as you're changing through them, water illusion is created. So it's a very simplistic animation. But it's slowing down the game. So I've been working on that for about a week and not getting anywhere. So indie developer, if you're watching, contact me so we can hit it up and I appreciate any help you can provide. So anyways, um, that's what that's doing is that's animating the world class. This one, to get back, um, I don't want to skip over this too fast here, so I'm going to kind of go back up here. This is initialization, so this is um, currently setting animation frames or something. This is just setting up the animation for that uh, animation. I'm not using these routines. These are ones that are created by indie developer. But I decided just to try my own stuff. <clears throat> so what it's doing basically, it's incrementing through um, an incrementer called clock. And if you go down here inside of this code, um, the render section where all the graphics actually render at, so to speak, or you know transmit to the screen, this is where it's actually drawn in the animations. And it's actually going directly through here. It's taking that clock you see right there and it's checking to see is it equal to zero because it's incrementing one, zero, one, two, three, four, so on. If it is, show the first water animation, pause and wait. If it's at tick two or clock point two, then it's this water animation two, else it's at three if it's number two. So it's basically going from zero, one, two. It's going in a row. That's what creates the smooth illusion of the water moving. This one here is for the diamonds. So I set up, a, if you look up here also, there's one called, I just call it a diamond flash. It's doing the same thing. It's incrementing through a position here from 10 back to zero each time. And it's doing the same thing. It's just planning where the diamonds are found out, of course, in here in the class. You know, right here is where the diamond, and it's at 4, or you see 0, 0, FFFF. 
that's basically what it's doing is it's scanning that and looking for those tiles right here FFFF and it's just seeing that you basically are, are animating the diamond so the diamond is just basically flashing the, the sparkly diamond and then this one here is um, the spider animation this one moves him up and down just by the positions and by the different drawn pictures of the spider basically same thing it's just using clock over and over again so I try to reuse the same variable so to speak but that's basically how that works um, this stuff I'm not using right now so I just wanted to kind of explain that to you and don't have to forget to watch when this video started um, anyways um, try to keep these under 10 minutes and I don't know if Camtasia has a clock on it or not, I don't think they do. I always got to keep track of it. But anyways, I'll try to cut it off here in maybe five minutes or so. It's like 10.57 right now, so, or 10.56. So going back to the player class, that's what that animation's doing. This is just a setting a flag to say that it's on. And a lot of this could, um, I wanted to explain this to you. This is the jump routine, so I'll show you in the video again. I'll run it before I play this, and I'll explain something real quick here. I think before I do this too, I'm going to turn off the sound so it's not so loud. You'll just hear the jumping, but you won't hear the music. So there's a jumping. So if I press the space bar, he'll make a sound and he'll jump. Watch how far he jumped. He jumped all the way up to the ceiling, right? So he's jumping pretty far. See how he can jump pretty far? That's because of a certain um, incremented variable I put in here that's allowing him to jump higher each time. And I'll, I'll show you that in a minute, which is down here in the tick routine. So let me explain how that works. Right here, he says, it says evaluate.ladder status, and this is coming from the check class. So it's basically checking to see if he's hit a ladder to kind of put it in layman's terms or whatever. And if he's hit, a, if, or excuse me, if he's not on the ladder, zero, I said it wrong, he's not on the ladder, and he's hitting a wall, which means he's dropping to the ground, and he's already touched the wall at the bottom there, if it's true, then it's going to basically set a variable called count boost to 25 to figure out how far he can jump. This is also saying below here, if it, it, once you've done this, it goes down to the next if, basically, so this is true, it goes to this one. If he's not pushing, if you're not pressing the button up, which I just set for the down arrow keys and up arrow keys, and the count boost is greater than zero, we know it is because this is all true, then it's going to go down here and it's going to check another routine, basically. I put the up in there so that you, if I didn't, when you press the up key, he kind of float in the sky and I didn't want that. I want to create gravity as illusion. So anyways, if this is true, it's going to go to thrust up. And this thrust up, it's a bullying object or whatever, if I'm saying that right. And basically what it's doing, or bullying variable, it's actually saying did you press the space bar because somewhere down in the code here I have the space bar initialized under a key event and if you did it's setting a flag for thrust up it's true so we press space bar count boost is greater than zero we know that's true because of this ladder status is still zero which is true because of up here now we know all these are true including the space bar being pressed and if it is it's going to start decrementing your count boost now I probably need to write some of this code because I don't probably need to repeat some of the stuff but anyways bad code I guess and if the count boost is greater than zero any animation animation state is now on the world map is now going to move so what does that mean it means when you press the button up notice the map scrolls up and this is what this world dot map dot position dot y pos is doing or y position is basically moving the map up that's what this minus equals count boost times six and this is the this implements the map movement of the up position or makes the map move up. So I wanted to show you as I did the jumper and I'll change this back to a two. Now remember earlier he hit the ceiling, so I'll change it to a two and watch what happens this time. I run it. Watch as he as I press the space bar. And I get it to work. Is he moving? Okay, he's running kind of slow here. Press the space bar. He doesn't jump as high. Watch, he's very limited in how far he can jump now. He's not hitting the ceiling anymore. So I go over here to that press space bar. He's not going all the way up to the ceiling. So I did that so that he could have super boosts, um, pellets or whatever you want to call them, pills. They'll be found in the treasure chest later randomly. He'll come across it maybe a one or two. He can use it for so many times and then he runs out of super boosts. Just something I added. And this is keeping track of the count boost. If it's less than zero, then it's finished, basically. This is saying if he's not 
he's not just jumping, he's on a ladder because it's now true. And you're still pressing the space bar. And you probably again need to rewrite this because this is all kind of in the same code. And I'll, I'll refigure that out later. Then it means the map is uh, moving up once again. So it's basically saying if you press the space bar, he's on a ladder, it's supposed to move him up. Let's see if that happens. It might not, but it's supposed to. Actually, I need to go find a ladder. I don't think he can reach that one above him, so I'm just going to drop down here. It'll take him a second to fall because of the game lag. <coughs> I had to cut it off here in about a minute. I know it's probably almost a minute up. You can also move in the sky backward and forward. Okay, so he's finally on the ground. <laughs> so if we press the space bar, he's going to jump. He's going to grab the ladder. Now I'm going to press the up key. Notice as he's moving up, if I press the space bar, is it moving him down? Oh, the space bar is actually moving him down. I must have that. So that's something I need to work on. But if he jumps off, he's going to fall off the ladder. So anyways, that's something I need to fix. But anyways, that's what that's doing. This is the animation state. It's changing the animation frames. And these are all the check positions. I'll, I'll, I'll create another video later to explain the check positions. Uh, they're a little bit more complicated. We'll skip over that for now. These are animation states, so as you're pressing a certain way up, down, left, or right, the animation is changing for the player. And you explained that before. Um, more animation rendering. You always want to tick what you, whatever you tick, you must render. And I think that's basically it. Down here is um, this is just an animation sequence I created. These are all the key events for the. I didn't also show you. I, I, I'm going to show this. Hopefully, on my video audio doesn't cut out. I want to show you this, something I invented and created into the game too. So if you're pressing certain key, you can move around in the map. I did this so I can kind of see other things I'm doing. So if I press Z, I'm moving down now through the map. And he's moving down. Once he hits the ground, you'll get to see a little bit more of the map this way. Press it again. He's farther down. Should take me to the bottom, whichever I want to be. Almost there. Okay, now he's at the bottom. Now if I press E, he should go to the right. It takes a second because it's running really slow. Also, we can't see him moving. I forgot. <laughs> I put a variable on the screen earlier that it really shows that he's actually moving. So I make sure I can move him. Okay, so he's still moving. It takes me a few tries to get there. I have no idea how far he's moved so far. Let me just move him up, do it that way. So if I press... Oh, I'm doing the wrong one. It's actually D. No wonder. My bad. I'm like pressing W. W is like taking him up or down. Here it goes. Now you see the map moving there. See how he moved into the map? Okay, so he's almost where I want him to be. So I'm just going to jump up this ladder just to show you another animation I created here. If I can get the game running really smooth, this animation will be so cool, I know. It's a waterfall, actually. Spent some time on it. Well, the audio is probably gone by now, so you're just going to be watching a silent game. I'm going to end it with this. Audio hasn't kicked out. You're welcome to subscribe if you want. We'll get this game night going away eventually. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. I'm going to show you this. Make him jump. He's going to fall in the water. There, you can kind of see it now a little bit better. I'm not moving it, kind of moves everything. I think the wall thing isn't moving yet. It's supposed to be moving. Right here, it's not moving. 
probably too slow. Anyways, wanted to show that to you. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day.